here at the tours check-in area. Now uh, this area here is the cheetah and the roller coaster insider tour. And we have the roller coaster insider tour. We're gonna go ahead and um, take this tour because I like all the technical stuff. So we're gonna go behind the scenes on now this is what it says it says cheetah hunt cobra's curse and montu we're going to go ahead and have some fun so let's see how that works out well we are uh just waiting uh just a little bit and we have a cheetah over here guys all right we are here uh bush gardens junkies all you junkies out here this is what we've been waiting for the behind the scenes tour of the roller coasters i'm paul and i got blake here and this is my dream come true i'm the only one taking this tour so what do you say we get going with this tour? oh we're gonna get going and we're gonna have some fun and and we're, we're gonna go ahead and check out what cheetah hunt we're gonna do cheetah hunt we're gonna do cobra's curse and we're gonna do montu some of my favorite rides besides iron Gwazi, you know these are these are right there up at the top <laughs> have you ever been on a ride's break run um on the break run no i don't believe i've been on the break run I've been in a maintenance barn. Oh, we're gonna have a party today. Uh oh, we're going on a break run. Right, well, let's go. Okay, so as you guys can see, team members only. We're a, uh, um, I guess we would be called a honorary ambassador for today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And there she goes, guys. So the first uh, coaster that we're actually going behind the scenes on is Cheetah Hunt. All right, so right now we're at our block to, uh, launch two area. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a total of three launches. Launch one's gonna be up there in the station, which launches your route from zero to 45. Launch two is gonna be right here. And it's gonna be zero to 60 to launch you all the way up to the figure eight over there. And then we have launch three, which is all the way out there, but we can't go out there because it's a ride restricted area. Yeah. So uh, launch two is just going to have to suffice. Oh, so right yeah. Right here, <laughs> these giant white fins right here are called the LSM Staters. They're basically huge giant magnets that has 480 volts of electricity that goes into them. We have a total of 64 just in launch two, but 22 of them are liquid cool. Mmm. Yeah. Yeah, they can get hot with all that current and oh, yeah. voltage going okay. through them, guys. And what powers our launch one and launch two are these two Hi, green generators right here. This is Kaisha, the other. Uh, super yeah, we, we know we know each other. Yeah. So we got the generators right here, guys, to power these LSMs right here. Yes. That launch you from zero to cheetah in no time. Yes. And if you can see right over here, we got these little black boxes. They're all throughout the track. Mm -hmm. So they're called our proximity switches, which detect speed, metal, and location. So for instance. When the train comes, it'll be triggered further down the track and it'll push push down these brake fins that sit down here. So we'll go right. ahead and go down here. Good. And these are the brake fins. You just saw them pull down. And here comes. And the brakes come back up just in case of a rollback which does happen sometimes if the perfect weather uh, permits. Yep. Um, so we have a total of 10 blocks. Blocks are basically um, safe areas that we can either relaunch you from mm -hmm. that area or escort you guys off the train if need be. Now that's for all you guys that don't understand. Uh, me, I know a little bit about the block areas and, and stuff like that, but all you guys watching out there, there are certain sections of the track 
where they can safely stop you at. And if there is a train in that block in front of you, a train can't proceed into the block previous of that. Correct. You understand that now. You want a job? Uh, <laughs> that was I would love on. a job that here. Spot on. I, I would love a job here. So, uh, and that's, uh, and this is one of the block areas here, guys. So that way, if in case um, a train gets stuck here, no train can be launched from the other block. Correct. Until this one gets out of the way. Correct. Yep. And that's all due to our safety system and our proximity switches, yep. which is all like electronic circuitry that integrates all the blocks. See that? Computers, they're necessary. Yes. <laughs> Here at one given time, um, we can only have the max of four trains online, which is like actually on the track and everything. Mm -hmm. We'll always have one train down for hand and maintenance, which is what you can see right here. Uh, the mechanics inspect it, like the track and the trains every morning, every night. Um, this train got stripped down when it reached its cycles of 55,000. Mm -hmm. So it's basically like 55,000 miles. So they're actually putting on the harnesses and just finishing up because it recently just got repainted. So I'm not sure where they're at with how much they have left to go. Um, we can ask him here in a bit. <laughs> um, the biggest thing that's going to be pulled up for us is the harness straps. Uh, we're waiting on those to come back from uh, getting relined. So once those get back, then that's going to be everything we need. I do believe. Uh, but yeah, right now we're, we're installing the harness, the lap bars. <laughs> Uh, so if we get those uh, harness straps back, probably another three weeks. Sounds good. And basically all, all the trains get through a maintenance cycle once a year, right? Uh, maybe a little over a year. A little over a year? Okay. So here, you can see these are our tires that go on the train. Fun little fact, they have a best used after date, so that way they have time to cure. So uh, mm. it can get a little bit more softer because right now it's pretty stiff and if it goes on, it's just not going to be the right fit. Um, now, speaking of wheels, uh, I saw something that these wheels are quite expensive. Yes. yes. Um, now, the smaller wheels are, what, 3000 about that? Uh, or? It, it depends. Uh, we sent them back in bulk. So we get a little bit of a discount. Okay. I actually and, have an accurate figure, if I may, I'm sorry to interject. Okay. I saw one time, I saw one time that a wheel, a road wheel, which is the large wheel, okay, we're talking about just the aluminum rim, I saw a price of around $2,600. Now, the rim though, once it's bought once, it can be sent out, like Ben was just telling you, I'm sorry I didn't interrupt you, they get sent out and they get a new lining put on it. Mm -hmm. um, every time the rim is sent out, inspected, Part of me and a new lining is placed on it it costs the park 11 or 1200 bucks something like that so you're around the boat park bro. right wow now, the so wheels, the wheels get reused over and over again mm -hmm. but the lining the lining the is lining good. they're probably your thing i'm sorry i didn't mean to interject i just i knew the answer i just wanted to give no you thank you very much thank you uh, i'm sure all the viewers want to hear about that too sure. because guys uh, i don't know do you have that wheel that ran over a phone yeah you do? One step ahead. So this, this is okay. This is like a PSA. We're not trying to be mean when mm -hmm. you go, you come to our ride and we tell you to put all your loose articles away. It's for your safety, your belonging safety, the train safety. Because right here, a cell phone got stuck and it kind of just dragged along the track. You see that, guys? There's a real close up. Now, now I, I sure hope you don't have a three thousand dollar phone. You mean a little something like this? Ah, uh, yeah, see? And that was probably the phone that was actually ran no, over. No, uh, we find these all the time. Oh. They, they, not all the time do they hit the wheels. Sometimes they'll hit the track. Sometimes they'll hit the front of the next coach. Mm-hmm. But sometimes they Or sometimes they might hit somebody in the head, guys. <laughs> guys, they might hit somebody in the head. Not only that, say if we've been like very busy and like the wait times are like a 60 minute wait, 120 minute wait. If we have to go down to retrieve somebody's loose article or a damaged item, people in line's not gonna be happy. All, all it takes is just one person to ruin it for everyone and get everyone angry and then we have to pick up the pieces. So we just want an easy day with everyone else too and just have fun. So guys, keep that in mind when you come on the roller coasters and visit Busch Gardens Tampa. 
stow away your phones. And if you really want that POV, get an action camera with a wrist mount like that or a chest mount. I've told you that many, many times, guys. So uh, I, I am a strong, uh, a strong advocate for safety when it comes to riding roller coasters and getting it recorded. So here at Cheetah Hunt, we have three different size wheels. This is our road wheel here. Mm -hmm. This is the one that goes underneath the main coaches. This next size from here, we have the pilot wheel. This is the one that goes underneath the pilot car. Okay. And then this size here is our up stops and guide wheels. So this is the one that goes on the side and underneath. Ah, okay. Now why is... Um the front one, the uh, the pilot wheel, smaller than the. Grab it if you give. Ah, <laughs> let's take a little walk over here and take a look at the wheel setup here. So these are the road wheels. They go underneath the main coaches. They're the load bearing. Ones. Yeah. So this is the ones that have all the people sitting on them. Yeah. Right. Also, you got the guides guide wheels underneath and on the side so that way you can do the nice little stunts and we walk up to the front here and you have the pilot car wheels which are just holding the weight of the pilot car oh well see that would make sense so you're not having people on there so you don't have to carry so much weight right if you also pay attention to the design of the train so if you come back here you'll see that the front of this car, the second car, is actually suspended by the coupler and the pin there, right? Mm -hmm. So, and it, it continues that way until the, all the way to the final car. Well, what's gonna suspend the front of the train if there's no car to hitch it to up front? So that's yeah. why you have like the a pilot car. car. Basically a dummy car. <laughs> Something like that, sure. Yeah, exactly. pilot car. This doesn't happen too often, but every once in a while, it's what we call an evac and uh, maybe these guys can explain what an evac really is and what we need to get the people out of the cars. So usually what we can do is we can relaunch a car. So there are different flocks, so uh, different areas we can actually relaunch the car from. But in case of an emergency where we can't actually relaunch the car, we have these boxes here. This is the old style. Which we probably a 45 pound. So if you've ever been escorted off a ride in the past and it's a hot summer day and we're huffing and puffing and super sweaty, it's because of the fat. <laughs> that one right there. Let's see you guys. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's a that's a quite a bit of weight to carry around with you. This is a new and improved version. Oh boy. Love a lot it. lighter. <laughs> Ten pounds maybe. <laughs> Does the exact same thing as the old one. We actually hook it up to you here. Each individual coach has this uh, hook up here. Mm -hmm. So what it does is it gives a current to these harness cylinders here, allowing them to release and having the harness come up. So once you take away that, uh, that charge, these will actually lock. So they can go down, but they cannot come back up. And if you notice guys, there are two cylinders in there for double safety. Mm -hmm. Correct. That, that's required by the uh, uh, whatever commission is in charge of, uh, what is it, agriculture? Agriculture. Yeah, the Department of Agriculture. Yeah. So there has to be a two locking mechanism system. And there you have it, the two cylinders that keep you locked in place. And now for whatever reason, if freak accident, both of these harness cylinders fail at the exact same time, the seatbelts that we have are rated for 3,500 pounds. So if for whatever reason both of these fail, that seatbelt will lock in place and keep you in your seat. Triple safety, guys. Yep, that's our number one priority here at Bush Garden. Exactly. Okay. Let's just try this one out here. Oh, yeah, if I ever worked here, I wouldn't mind carrying that one. That one, no way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. So this is what actually makes the trains go in the launches. 
So these are, uh, uh, we actually have them labeled for left side and right side. The way we differentiate it is we put a stripe on the right side. So that mm -hmm. way when we're installing them, these magnets are so strong that if they are actually installed backwards, it'll get stuck down here and launch too. It won't have enough power to go over. Yeah, we don't want that to happen. <laughs> And you notice how they keep a piece of wood in there to keep them separated. Mm -hmm. That and, way they don't get stuck together. And uh, once they get it mounted together and put the screws and mount it to the actual track, I'm sure they take the wood out. No. Yes. <laughs> Let's see. Good luck trying to get that off. There you go. The trick. <laughs> so you, uh, you obviously have a channel, right? <laughs> you want to really impress your viewers? Yeah. I want to see you pull this sucker off. <laughs> okay. All right. Why don't you give that? I'm gonna. I want to place it on there for you. All right. Or you can do it. Okay. All right. Why don't you go ahead and be careful and watch your hands. It's like the wrench in the stone. Yeah. <laughs> what? You broke it. Did you break our magnet, sir? I hope you have a lot of views on this channel. <laughs> okay. They gave me. A bunk wrench. Yes. So the wrench is made of a special material. Non-magnetic. Correct. Non-ferrous. That's, that's correct. We do that just to mess with you. Yeah. Okay, guys. They mess with me. We also have other tools. So that tool there was made and custom designed by the part. So we actually split the two magnet uh, pieces. The center of the magnets, it, there's a series of hardware there that we check mm -hmm. and take the magnets out for annual. And so obviously we need tools that are not going to get stuck to the magnets. So those T-handles and those Allen's are made of the same non-magnetic material. Yeah. All, otherwise, could you imagine sticking it in there, checking the torque on the pole. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I can't get my tool out. That's correct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hope you didn't mind me messing with you a little. Oh no, that's great. Thank you. So, welcome to Cobra's Curse. Um, we open on June 17th, 2016. Um, and the ride is manufactured by the company Mach. It's a German company. Mm -hmm. We just had a piece shipped in this morning. So, oh, just went up that's, today. That's why we're running today. Yeah. So, okay, guys, if you haven't known, Cobra's Curse has been down for the past couple of days. And uh, so we finally got a part in from Mock Rides to uh, help us out and get us on here and ride it. Now Hannah here is a supervisor. Before, uh, like about three months ago, I think it was Jessica was the supervisor. So Hannah is going to give us a little tour behind the scenes here, right? Yeah. One of our favorite rides. We like this mini part. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to walk you back this way. Right? Oh, we're going to go through the exit. Now, one of the, the best things that I like about Cobra's Curse is the unusual way that they have for ADA loading. Now, it's the same transfer track that they use to transfer the trains to the maintenance barn. So this is our lift one. It's 70 feet tall. And a snake statue across from it is 80 feet tall. The lift is supposed to be representing a crane. So you're putting the snake statue back onto the onto its body. So um, activating the Cobra's Curse. Oh, here we go. The backstory of Cobra's Curse. <laughs> On the side there, there's a little Easter egg. It has the Bush Gardens logo, the coaster tree. Ah. Uh. Over to our other lift. So yeah, the backstory is here we are excavators and we are replacing the head of the cobra using the crane. And if you look well, yeah, there's a coaster tree. And uh over here is our block break. We have 13 blocks. A block is a section of the track only one train can occupy at a time. Mm -hmm. So for any maintenance shutdown, you'll stop at one of our 13 blocks. And this is one of them block breaks where you turn backwards 
facing the snake statue. And then you're gonna go around this. I, I've heard that this is supposed to represent like a snake's body coiled up in the section of the track. And you're sliding down its back, backwards. Yeah. And then you're gonna go up our lift two, which is 40 feet tall, completely backwards. And then once you go down our lift, you're gonna go into a free spin. We do not control your spin. It's based on the weight distribution. So I've heard more weight in the front, you're gonna get a lot more spin. We, we, we've experienced that ourselves. <laughs> My wife and I, we showed you how the, and, and you can really only do this while it's not that crowded, but I like the front left, and she takes the back right, and by balancing out our weight like that, we seem to get the best spins. So it is true. It is a free spin. They have no control over it. It's whatever you get. So if you balance the weight out right, you can definitely get good spinach. And I think we counted five spins on that one trip. Oh, wow. Five. Yeah. I'm gonna take you to one of our limited Now we're going. Yeah, it's kind of noisy. <laughs> Yep. This is one of our limited access areas. Now, limited access as opposed to ride restricted area. This is where normally the support structures are and that we can access it without them having to shut down the ride. And we have equipment here. <laughs> Yeah. So, thank you guys to our maintenance barn. Ooh. Now I've always wondered uh, where the maintenance barn is on this one because uh, you only see it right around the corner here. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but um, with our trains, there are three different ways. Well, there's a few different ways to open up our lap bars. One of our first ones is right here is where we can insert our lap bar key. Only certain trains can use the lap bar key system. If, um, if it is a pump train, which I will show you our pumps in a minute, then you cannot use a lap bar key on it. Um, so you would put, insert the key and pull it towards you and the lap bar would lift up. And then if you follow me back here, <laughs> and, and you notice there is no track here guys right. <laughs> so right here you see those little um notches on the back you're gonna uh put the pump on top of it pump as, hot, as much as you can as hard as you can till that lap bar lifts up um that's the new system we're going to be converting over to so we won't really be using lap bar keys too much anymore um, right here, once you unscrew that cap, you can insert a battery pack. This is uh, usually what we do for evacs, okay. but um, occasionally we'll do them on platform as well. Um, but you'll insert the battery pack, switch it from one, seat one, it'll open up seat one, seat two, opens up seat two, and then so, so that's seat one, two, three, and four. If you look right here, there's little numbers to give you a little bit um, of help if you forget which seat is which. Oh, it's upside down, guys. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, so I'm going to take you guys this way onto our platform. Ooh. This is one of our lap bar keys. So you would insert that into the slot. Which I've it. seen them grab every once in a while. Yeah. Yep. Right. Oh, and we're there. on the platform. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. 
speaking about earlier. So you would put that on the back. You can feel a bit of pressure building up in there. That's when you know it's gonna start lifting. So if you don't feel any pressure, you know that lap bar's not gonna open up. Yeah. Ah. Here we go, our wonderful ambassadors. Making everybody stay happy here, right? Yes! <laughs> Here we go guys, the best part of it all, actually going to the panel. So this is our panel, um, we have here monitors of each block so we can see where you guys are at if you stop at any point on the track. Um, and then here we can get a better look at our panel. So you see these, um, these parts of the seat where it's lit up green, that means their lap bars are good and ready to go. If you see the gray, that means that the, the lap bar is not fully locked in its secured place. So we need to have the guests push down a little more and then um, the ambassadors will help them out with that. Um, those, the uh, lights above the platform are um, the indicators if the train has tagged or not. So the red one is for the unload side and the green one is for our load side. Uh, the orange light is for any uh, for our light barrier system. So if anything falls into the track, like a loose article or something, there are these beams going across our track. So if anything is constantly breaking that beam, um, it's gonna send an error system to the panel and then um, we'll have to call maintenance and see if it's, if you can see something in the track, we're gonna take it out, see, um, see if we can get that. But if it's nothing in the track, maintenance is gonna have to come and adjust something. And then if it's solid, that means someone has pressed one of our station stops. The station stop just stops everything in our station, just how it sounds. Mm -hmm. So stopping our belt and stopping any trains moving in the station, but the ride will continue. Um, over here is where we control all of our lights and audio. So the track audio, gift shop audio, and over here is where all of our automatic spiels are. So we can pick which blocks we want to play everything to. Um, by just selecting any of these and then our light system as well. So changing any lights in the queue or outside Interesting um, So over and, here, and if you look at the panel here, you can definitely see all the different blocks. Yeah um, Anywhere on the yellow <laughs> is where a train is occupying on the track So anywhere it's white, there's no train in that area, but anywhere it's yellow That means there is a train in that area of the track. Yeah um, If you go over to here these are our lockouts. We use lockouts if we have to go into any ride restricted area. So you would push down our e-stop, apply this, pull our silver uh, latch over, apply this over it, and then you would lock your lock on there. Lock your key with you, keep it on you at all times. You are the you are in charge of your key. You're the only person who can touch your key. No one else can take it off for you, no one else can put it on for you. So it's a safety system of making sure no one is in the track when we're going to restart the ride. And that could be a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. We, we always are, and this is one of the best things about Bush Gardens, they're always concerned about guest safety, uh, actually just safety in general. So those lockout keys are very, very important to the operation of the ride because we definitely do not want any of the ambassadors out there on the track when they restart the ride. That could be, uh, yeah, let's just say harmful to our health. <laughs> are you ready to ride the ride? Oh, we are definitely ready to ride the ride. Would you like me to pull it over into 88 for you? Or do you want just to go? I, I can just walk on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we just uh, got off of Cobra's Curse and 
I, I still escape the curse. I, I don't know about the people behind me, but <laughs> they, I don't think they got it out in time. But now we're on to our last coaster on the behind the scenes tour, which is Montu. 27 years ago, so we turned 27 in May. Hey, here's my good buddy Jahari here. Um, so it opened in May 16th, 1996, so that makes it 26 years old. When it opened, it was the world's tallest and fastest inverted roller coaster. It's also one, um, Florida, one of Florida's first inverted roller coasters, um, so that means that the track sits above your head while your feet dangle underneath. Um, when it opened, it stood at 150 feet tall. It still does. Um, <laughs> and then, it grew. Yeah. Um, and then it goes 60 miles per hour. The drop itself is 128 feet, um, which is a fun fact that the drop on Cheetah Hunt is two feet taller. So, Hear that, guys? Just two feet taller. Yeah, just two feet. Um, when it opened, it used a new element called the implement. Uh, Montu was the first roller coaster to use that element. And it's named after the German fighter pilot from yep. World War I. Um, so that's a pretty cool feature that a lot of rides use now. And then it also has seven inversions. How many, how many blocks do we have? Six. Six blocks in here. Yeah, so we have the station, the lift, then block break, and then we have service, safety, and waiting. So the least amount of blocks on the other two, from the other two coasters here. Yeah. Um, and, and there was another fun fact that Blake actually mentioned. Down here, there were Caymans down here. Not Gators, but Caymans. So. Um, so on to the actual ride itself. The ride can run up to three trains at a time, but we have four on property. Um, you guys talk, probably talked about wheels at Cheetah Hunt and Cobra Stairs. Yeah. Um, we have the same type of wheels, except ours are hidden by bonnets, which are the decorative pieces that cover it. Um, we have two different types of road wheels. We have wheel, road wheels made, uh, made out of nylon and then wheels made out of polyurethane. So the, uh, the wheels and the front two rows are, uh, are made out of nylon, and it's a harder material which suits the train from top. Um, and then the last six rows are polyurethane road wheels, which uh, is softer material, so it slows the train down. So they kind of counterbalance each other. Um, so the, fast, the first two rows may seem a little bit faster than the rest of the train. Now, are the uh Main wheels and guide wheels the same size, or they're different size they're wheels? They're different sizes. So the different road sizes. wheels are, are much bigger because they're supporting the weight of the train. Right. Our guide wheels are in constant contact with the track at all times, giving it that smooth experience compared to rides like uh, Gina Hunt and Coast Coast, where the guide wheels aren't always in constant contact. Uh, so b and those guide wheels always stay in contact with the RNC, that's why they're very, very smooth and different for the entire ride. And then our up, um, our up loop wheels are a little bit smaller. Um, they can kind of hold the track, you know, train on the track with the both doing versions and stuff like that. Um, you probably talked about the kind of like air system at Cobra, how like the trains have an air system to like open the lap bars. Oh yes, system. yeah, the uh, yeah the um, tanks. Yeah. So we kind of have we have two different types of pneumatic systems. We have our pneumatic system that controls the harnesses. So whenever we have power. Just in case we need an evac. Just in case. And it rarely happens on this ride. Yeah, rarely. <laughs> um, Cheetah Hunt uses foot pedals to dispatch the train. Cobra Spirits uses RFIs. Um, we use finger sensors. Um, so every ride's a little bit different. Finger, uh, finger presents are kind of like the foot pedals. This ride actually used to have foot pedals. Um, all you do is put their finger on, send the train to bring it back in, take it off to um, not bring the train in. So basically the finger on there means thumbs up, everything's clear, 
the platform is free from guests, so the train can come in without riding over anybody. <laughs> we also have a lift stop, so obviously Cheetah Hunt doesn't have a lift, so they don't have lift stops, they don't have emergency stops, and then Cobra's Coast is constantly moving, so they don't have lift stops. Right. We have a lift stop, and we use it in the event that someone unbuckles or seat belt as the train is leaving. So that's why we would um, lift stop on this ride. So this ride in Kumba is a lift stop. Do you have any questions so far? Uh, no. Nope. Nope. Alright, we're gonna head this way. We're gonna head back this way. <laughs> A limited access area, guys. Now, keep in mind, we can only go back here with Jahari or another supervisor. Even though I come here so many times, they still won't let me behind the scenes. So this is our waiting area. Uh, we also have brakes here. We only use friction brakes at Mountain 2. It uses a pneumatic air, um, air system to open and close these brakes. Uh, the brakes are kind of like the car brakes on a car. Um, you, when you push the pedal, it squeezes it to slow it down. That's exactly what these do. Um, rides like Cheetah High and Cobra's Coast use magnetic brakes, and then we're using friction brakes. More reliable. Yeah. Ooh, we're going further down. <laughs> um, this is our transfer track. So this is a track right here. Um, the pin will unlock, and then they can slide the track down this way to three different sections of track, which house our trains. And there is that maintenance barn, guys. So we have three trains in there right now, and then uh, one train on the track. We're gonna head downstairs now. Ooh. Ah, and some storage. There's the uh, little coverings that they have over the wheels. And we are going to go underneath. The maintenance barn up there. That's our maintenance barn. This is the back end. So this is a train that they're working on for annual maintenance. Um, the other two trains in there are also in annual maintenance. Um, but the trains, will, uh, they open these doors and they can take the train down and onto these little pieces right here. You see there's one here and the cell back over there. And that's where they kind of take the train apart, clean it, and then put it back up there. And then we put it back together with new parts and expected pieces. This is our compressor for our friction brakes up above. Um, kind of the compressor for the whole ride. Ooh, going further deeper in. Talk about behind the scenes. <laughs> and of course, somebody lost their slipper. Yeah, so while we're going underneath, well, there's no train above us, so. Sweeping arches, which is kind of like a turnaround, drop down into another turn, and then our corkscrew finale, which is right here. Yes. Some of the best parts. <laughs> yeah. um, are you okay taking stairs? Yeah. Okay, so we're actually going to go up halfway to block right now. A little bit. I mean, yeah, if we don't climb all the way up. Yeah, we're not going out all the way up. <laughs> now, this is the midsection here, midsection break. A 
if you guys are still with us, I highly recommend the roller coaster behind the scenes tour, guys. This is phenomenal. And if you guys like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. And we may even get some more of these uh, behind the scenes tours in for you guys. Uh, they're talking about secret, possibly. Yes. Being all the way up there at the top before the first drop. Thankfully, you won't have to climb those stairs. <laughs> yeah, thankfully, they have a little uh, caddy that takes you up there. <laughs> so that's good. Yeah. I wish Gwazi <laughs> had that, huh? Yeah. Those stairs are horrible. Uh, these are starting to get bad. Good thing, worry, go we're here. Good thing going down is easier than going up. Okay, so <laughs> this is block break. This is our section of track where the train can safely stop in the event of a shutdown we can safely escort the guests off the rack. A lot of good views around here. Oh yeah. You can see the giraffes over in the distance. Oh yeah, the Serengeti belt back there. Really cold up here. <laughs> and this is a good spot for good views. Yep, so we're gonna wait for a train to go by. Um, when the train goes by, it is gonna shake just so you know. I've ridden it. <laughs> <laughs> um, fun fact is when sorry first opened, there was a lot of extended queue and they needed. So you kind of see like this concrete walkway right here. That actually used to be a, a queue line for the ride. Ooh. Long, like a long time ago. But we don't use it anymore because we don't need it. Along with getting rid of the Caymans. Yes. <laughs> Sounds like the uh, chain just started up. Feel it shaking. It's a shaking. There we go. And there they go. And the corkscrew. Riding it, the sweeping arches here don't feel as fat, uh, feel a lot faster than they look. Oh, yeah, like from up here, that looks slow. But yeah, when you're on it, you're just like, I wish it would stop. Yeah. <laughs> yep, uh, the question I get asked a lot on this tour is like where guests lose their stuff the most, and there's not really like a designated spot because like there's phones everywhere, um, really. <laughs> but a lot of people lose their phone at the first inversion of the bat wing, and usually right there, you kind of see how like the fence is like really close there, mm -hmm. so their phones usually go flying into the animal habitat oh so we can't usually get it so once again please don't bring your phones or lose articles on rides yeah yeah because exactly it becomes my job I, I i cannot enforce this enough guys and yeah that that pit, that photo that i saw with those uh two people on the front row of cheetah hunt with their phones holding it like that big no-no just don't do it Okay, guys, it's just not worth it. You will lose a phone. And not, not only will you lose a phone, but it may even break the phone to 
yeah beyond recognizable and these guys here have to go out and actually look for your phone so just don't bring them on the amount of broken phones we fish out of uh, animal habitats every day is there's actually a, a lot. phone on the, on the far side of the loop in the trench it's sitting on top of the track which we don't, we can't get to it because it's on top of the track. So that person's phone, they just never get it back. Yeah. Yep. They had to get a new one. Now, something really uh, interesting that I learned recently. So at the start of the bat wing, there's a set of brakes built into the track that sort of slow it down before it gets there because when the ride first opened, it would take this bat wing at such high G's and high speeds, it would cause a lot of people to get sick. So they added in like a semi brake run right there to slow it down so people wouldn't get as sick. There you go. There you have it. There are trim brakes right there. So that way people don't black out or gray out. Now, so honestly, you can't honestly. stop either. So it won't stop the train. It won't no, stop it. it won't they're stop just, the they're just, just trim. Down. They're just trimming brakes, which won't stop it, but slows it down enough so that way, yeah, people don't black out or gray out, which I think is always good to gray out on a ride. But then you do miss the experience, so. Yeah. <laughs> you miss the rest of the ride. You miss the rest of the ride. Depends on how much you gray out. I don't really gray it on this ride. I don't either. The only ride I, I really gray out on is 4K. I feel like my throat skin getting pushed back while I'm on this ride. Yeah. I have noticed, though, <laughs> as I've grown older, that I rather prefer the middle on this one than the front or the back. I it's used nice to like... And easy. Yeah. It, it's, it's smooth in the middle. But you still get, like, the... Oh, yeah. Whips, you you still you get, get the whips. Yeah. Uh, unlike the back. The back row, but then again, I like the back row on Iron Wazi because yeah. I like the the intensity, the speed, the speed. Well, guys, that was it. That was uh, behind the scenes. So, Jahari, come here, come on. We have Jahari here that gave us the behind the scenes of Montu. And thank you to Blake for being my special associate that comes with me here. And uh, that will do it. We're going to hop on Montu now and go for a ride. And uh, we'll catch you on the flip side, guys.